Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Theatre Thoughts Podcast. I have a very special guest on today who I'm very, very excited to talk about musical theatre because I feel like they love musical theatre as much as I love musical theatre. So this will be a great chat. We have a presenter who started on radio in 1992 working as both a a producer and presenter with a passion and dedication for theatre, particularly in uh, Melbourne. And they have a special fondness for musical theatre. He believes that theatre is a magical realm where storytelling transcends spoken words. It's Andrew G. Welcome to the podcast. Dustin, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you. I've, I've actually followed you for a, a while now uh, since getting into like the whole theatre thoughts aspect of everything. And um, your work as a producer is um, is great. It's outstanding. You have so many great shows on. Oh, thank you so much. Look, it's just such a such an amazing thing um, to be allowed to do. And you know, when I say be allowed to do, you know, have uh, have have performers, have crew, have technical people, you know, coming along for the ride and and, and supporting the vision of, and of course, the audiences um, that, that that buy the tickets to to fund these dreams and uh, and and to make what we really want to do possible. It's 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 just an amazing thing to be to be able to be a part of. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. And I love that your setup is very similar to my background. You know, I noticed that. <laughs> I noticed that. Is the and first I promise thing I our people didn't talk. Did we, this wasn't planned ahead of time. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> oh, good. I love it. I love it. If I had like my own house, I would have like a whole room of playbills if I yeah. could. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, let's talk about yourself then before we jump into our, our questions, I suppose. So for people who don't know you, um, I know I did like a little bit of a rundown, but who is um, Andrew G? I, uh, sorry, Justin, I missed that question. We had a bit of a glitch. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, I was just asking, um, like, if you go back into your background as a performer and, uh, oh, sorry, producer and presenter and um, just a bit about yourself, your history. Yeah, I, um, as a kid, I, um, I, I loved the idea of um, being a DJ. And I was always mucking around with, with uh, well, back then, uh, I, just, I just turned 50, so it was a little while ago. Um, back then, it was, uh, it was, you know, records and, uh, and, and CDs. Uh, and I used to play in my bedroom and talking to a microphone. And, uh, and then first time I had the opportunity, um, I, I started talking on the radio. Um, and that would have been, I reckon, in 1990, 91, at uh, uh, Triple R, community radio station, big community radio station here in Melbourne. Uh, and just fell in love with it. And I fell in love with... Um, you know, being able to communicate and being able to present music and stories back then, this is 1990, so, you know, pre-internet as we know it now, pre-Spotify, pre-YouTube, pre-all all that sort of stuff. Um, the only place you could go to hear different points of view or to hear different music or, or, or books or, or whatever it is you're into was radio stations like Triple R. And there were radio stations just like them, you know, all over, all over Australia. Um, and... I, I loved that. And I also, once I got into it, I loved what community radio was all about. It was about people coming together, uh, you know, presenters, producers, music people, writers, technical people, all coming together in order to make this thing uh, that's bigger than the sum of all of its parts. Mm. Um, and, you know, fast forward many, many years, producing theatre is the same thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's the same thing in that you know you've got your, your your singers and your dancers and your actors on stage, but you've also got your people that you that build your sets and and make the costumes and do the scenic painting and the designers and the technicians and and you know the 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 ushers and the front of house staff that that, that greet our audiences as they're coming into the theatre for the first time. The the the, the marketing people, the the the, the, the dressmakers. I mean, there are just so many people that come together to uh, to bring this story to life on stage. Um, what I keep telling people that I love about uh, theatre over radio is it doesn't have a use-by date. Um, yeah. You know, these days we've got podcasts just like this one, Justin. Mm. Uh, you don't really need to be sitting in a radio station. I mean, we're, you know, we're both sitting in our homes in different parts of Australia having a chat. Um, whereas... Radio, you know, are people, I, I don't know, I, I don't think as many people are re- listening to uh, to mainstream radio as they used to because people can listen to what they want when they want to or read what yeah. they want when they want to. Uh, whereas live theatre is live theatre. And, and I've always found the best 
recent-ish example of that is during all of the um, the, the COVID lockdowns, when when you know the, every single theater on the planet was was, was shut down, um, Disney Plus very cleverly uh, streamed Hamilton. Yes, uh, and then I later comes that. Um, and you know, a year or so later, Hamilton opened here in Melbourne. And they were selling it night after night after night. And I bet you most of those people had seen it at least once, probably more like me, yeah. <laughs> um, but still wanted to see it live because live theatre is just different. Exactly. Exactly. It's so different. I, like there's so many times I sit in a theatre and I just go, you just get so immersed in the experience and you kind of lose yourself. You know, when those lights come back on, you're like, oh, back to reality, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and that, that's kind of the that's that's the fun of being able to produce shows that you can you can transport people, um, you know, to these other worlds. Uh, you know, whether it's yeah, nineteen thirties Austria with the sound of music, or whether mm. it's the fantasy land of uh, of of the Wizard of Oz, or uh, or if it's uh, you know, the many scenes over the lifespan of Peter Allen in uh, in in the Boy from Oz. It's, it's 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 a it's a tool, it's a device, and, and I sort of keep saying to people that um, you know I reckon there's not there's no more efficient medium than musical theatre because rather than taking an entire rack to say something, just bust into a song, get it done in, in 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 a couple of minutes. Yeah, exactly. Chuck a tap number in there, you'd be very very happy. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'd love to talk about um, the Boy from Oz because you have the Boy from Oz coming in July. Yeah. Um, you have the opening night of Sound of Music tonight, but by the time this comes out, that'll be come and gone and you're focusing on The Boy From Oz. Yeah. Um, so why why The Boy From Oz? Why this show? Um, look, it's it's just, look, there, there are a lot of reasons. Um, it's, it's a great, it's a great Aussie success story. Mm. Um, both, both the, 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 the story, the life of Peter Allen but also the life of The Boy From Oz. The Boy From Oz was the first um, Aussie show to make it big on Broadway. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it, was, it was part of what the rest of the world, and by the rest of the world I really mean um, UK and the US, um, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 um, it's, it's part of that, the rest of the world taking Australian arts and culture seriously. Mm, uh, yeah. You know, things like uh, movies like Strictly Ballroom and Crocodile Dundee um, and, and, and musicals like The Boy From Oz um, are our foundation as Aussies on the world stage, in, in, in my opinion. And, 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 you know, Peter Allen, the the person on whom the musical is 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 what based is pivoted around. Mm. Um, he was one of the early Aussies to make have mainstream success overseas too. So you know it's it's an art imitating life um, scenario, and and the, the the show itself is is, is super special to, to 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 me, and 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 I think to a lot of people because. You know, it talks about, um, you know, one of those sort of typical Aussie overnight successes that take about 25 years of nothing but hard work and determination. Yeah. Uh, and you only see the end result, you know. It's like yeah. these days on uh, on Insta. No one posts their fails. No, you of know? course. I mean, no, you see wins. all the good stuff that I do in theatre. I yeah. can tell you there are rehearsals, there are tech <laughs> nights that are an absolute abomination. I'm never going to post them. No, of course uh, but not. But they happen. They still yeah. happen, even though you're not going to see them on on, on my feed. Um, but but yeah, it's a story. It's a story of you know resilience, determination, talent, passion, hardship, heartbreak, um, and that yeah, it's not all glitz and glamour. Mm, you yeah. know, you 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 aim for something, and it's it's not always what you expect it to be. And 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 I think. I think it's a really important story to tell, um, and it happens to also be at times really funny, uh, you know, really happy, 
Uh, it's, a, it's a celebration. It's, it's absolutely a celebration uh, of the life and the career of, of Peter Allen and, and of Australia. Yeah, definitely. There's so many like Australian things in there that when you're watching it as an Aussie, you go like, oh, yeah, this is really special. Like yeah. even like the Tannerfield Sadler moment yeah. as well. It's yeah. a part that not a lot of Americans and, and US, I'm um, sorry, UK as well would even know about. But mm. um, obviously, you know, from the humble beginnings of Boy From Oz, we had Hugh Jackman in the lead and yeah. then um, Todd McKenney took it all around Australia. I think it did like over a thousand shows, um, which is what helped make Todd McKenney um, – who he is today and and also Hugh Jackman as well. I remember I saw Hugh in the production when he did it in Sydney. I was only like young kid, like in my teens, but um, I, I just have a very, I have two vivid images. One is when he descends from the top of the stadium with the piano and I'm just like, oh my God, that's insane. And then when he has his audience interaction in intermission, he was like at the end of my row, like a couple of seats away from oh, wow. us and interacting with this guy, getting him to dance and all that stuff. And, yeah. He was absolutely incredible. But um, let's talk about your Peter Allen uh, for the show. I believe, I think it's been announced. I'm not entirely It, it sure. has been announced. Matthew Hadgraft is, uh, is our Peter Allen. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've had the, uh, the privilege of working with, with Matt before. And, and look, he's, he's a great talent. He's, uh, he, he is such a passionate um, Peter Allen fan. Uh, uh, understates what he is. He, um, you know, he's he's ridden a Peter Allen uh, cabaret show. Okay. Um, and and Matt doesn't, uh, he doesn't look or sound like Peter Allen. Okay. Because it's not, it, you know, but, but, but he's not me too. But mm. when you see him perform, you absolutely believe that you're watching Peter Allen on stage. It, 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 it's something really, really magical. His connection um, with the Peter Allen persona is, 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 is actually mind-blowing. Mm. Uh, and, you know, put him in the costume, put him in front of a, a, a grand piano on a big stage like the National Theatre with, with the set design that's, uh, that's already uh, well underway. I, I, I reckon... You'd have a hard time not believing you're, you know, in venues like, um, you know, the, the the Hong Kong Hilton or or uh, um, Radio City Music Hall. It's it's it's. I think it's going to be an amazing experience. That's so exciting. That's great. I mean, like the boy from Oz, like you said, it is. It, it's audiences just love it. You know, like you said, it played for over a thousand shows in Australia, plus Hugh Jackman's one as well. So I think audiences in Melbourne particularly will flock to come and see this because they love, you know, The Boy From Oz. They love all the songs. Obviously, you got Go From Rio in there and then all the other ones that apart from it, you know, to make up the show. But um, I think it's a very good choice. And uh, I think it'll play very well for Melbourne audiences, especially down to the National League, except with a big stage. Yeah, I hope so. And of course, the the unofficial Aussie anthem I still call Australia home. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, it's 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 that they are. There are some really iconic songs that people that don't know the show and don't know the Peter Allen story mm. um, probably don't even appreciate that that they were his songs. Uh, there yeah. are songs. There are songs in the show that 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 he, well, all the songs in the show he wrote. But there are songs in the show that he wrote for other people. Yeah, right. um, so it's a real, it's a sort of, it's a, it's a discography highlight um, of of, um, of of some of his work, not just the work that that he made famous, but the work that uh, that, that that other, ooh, the work of his that other people made famous too. And of course, yeah, his uh, his marriage to Liza Minnelli, oh. um, his uh, chance meeting with uh, with with Liza's mum Judy Garland uh, from. The Wizard of Oz, uh, yeah. plugging a previous show from a <laughs> year ago, or whenever, whenever we did that, um, and you know all of these stories that are sort of intermeshed um, and, and 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 written so well. Uh, mm. You know, it's it's it's. I mean, it's not quite a jukebox musical because it's all Peter Allen's music, and 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 it's a it's a biographical um, treatment of, of of his songs. Yeah. Um, but it's not often that you get a jukebox-ish musical that actually has a really strong book, a really strong script to yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Well. And this definitely. is one of those that absolutely nailed both the music, well, which was already written. So, you know, that, mm. that, that was in, in some ways the easy bit. Yeah, that's easy. The book <laughs> that really does justice to the music but does justice to, uh, to um, you know, the, the, the life of Peter Allen. 
Yeah, definitely. Well, it's a great choice. And like I said, audiences are going to love seeing it in July um, when, it, when, you, when it comes out. Yeah. Um, well, I know we're um, coming to the end of our time, so I'd love to ask uh, the question I ask every guest that comes on is um, I'd like to know um, how you think in your experience the theatre industry has changed over the years and how those changes have impacted the work that you do and the work that you create. Yeah, I think, um, look, I think on the biggest change right now, um, the, the biggest change right now is, 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 is cost of living. It's affordability. It's, uh, you know, to, how much money can you justify spending on, on a theatre ticket when, you know, rents and mortgage payments are going up, cost of fuel is going up, cost of groceries are going up, um, and, 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 you know, how important is musical theatre or entertainment and arts and culture generally in, in, mm. in, in that mix? And, and, you know, that's, that's a big challenge for, 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 for us as an industry and for me as a producer, especially when our cost of putting shows on yeah. continually increases too. So there's this, this constant tension between having to cover costs without shortcutting um, quality of the theatre experience, but also keep ticket prices at a price point where it's accessible to as many people as possible. Mm. Um, and that's, 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 that's my constant struggle. Um, I mean, it's easy to make cheap theatre, but it won't look any good or sound yeah. any good. Yeah. Um, but to, you've got to be able to do justice to the story and, and, and respect the time and the money of the audience that are, mm, that, that are coming it. out to see the show. So that's, that's been a real tough one for us. And, you know, we, we work really hard to keep our ticket prices under, well under $100, mm. um, you know, which, which some of the big shows don't do because they can't do because they're massive theatres and, and, you know, massive touring companies which, with huge overheads. Uh, but we can do it, so we do do it. And I think that makes our productions, well, I hope that it makes our productions uh, more accessible, but of course the other the other really important um, change in theatre is uh, is inclusion and diversity, and and you know we've got a very um, we've got a very firm we as as a, as a theatre company have a very firm policy around inclusion and and diversity, and for us it's about casting people that. Um, can obviously sing, dance and act and do what the role requires, yeah. but um, they don't necessarily need to identify as the, uh, the same gender or ethnicity as the one that was written into the role back whenever the role was written because we're in Australia. We've got an incredibly diverse community, you know, just out on the street. And, and I think our shows, our stages need to reflect the diversity of our community. Mm. Um, and that's a really important thing that, that, that you know, for us, it's a, it's a constant work in progress. But it's, it's, it's so great to see that there are so many other uh, producers and production companies uh, that, that, are, that are doing that now too. In order to give people the opportunity that, that haven't previously had the opportunity to either be cast in those shows or be sitting in the audience seeing someone just like them up on that stage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, perfectly said. I yeah, couldn't have said any better myself. That was amazing. Well done. <laughs> You've obviously done this before. <laughs> Once or twice. Yeah, not, my, not my first time behind a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for jumping on. I'm very excited to see all the works that you do. I think actually we have someone coming tonight to come and see um, The Sound of Music, so I can't wait to hear all about it. And good luck with the shows coming up, and I can't wait to chat some more later on. Justin, thank you so much. It was great chatting with you.